You can see here that I've uh, connected the boiler permanently, well, not so permanently, to the smoke box using um, 8BA, let's see if we get this out of here, using 8BA countersunk screws, brass screws, you can see them there. So that's nicely fastened on there. Now what I'm going to do is finish off the axle pump, put the seals in, put the, the non-return valves in. I'll just show you how I do that. I was thinking about painting the whole of the frames, but I'm not going to do that. I think I'll run it first. This is a quick drawing of the boiler water pump, just to demonstrate how it works and how simple it is, really. This is the, um, the pump chamber which has a uh, just an ordinary piece of round stainless steel ram in it that's driven off the eccentric from the wheels. Here you have the, um, uh, the valve chamber which has um, one-eighth stainless steel balls in it here. This is coming in from the water tank, this is going out to the boiler. When the, the ram pulls back, the water comes in through this nut here of this chamber. This ball lifts, allowing the water to fill the space where the ram is pushing back, pulling back from. This ball sits down tight on this seat here, preventing the water coming back down from the boiler. Then once this chamber is full, the ram then pushes forward. This ball seats back down onto this area here, whereas this ball lifts and allows the water to pass through to the boiler. I've taken out the uh, four ABA screws that are holding the pump frame into the main frame of the locomotive so I can now remove it and you can see what an elaborate um, thing this pump appears to be and the reason it is like this is because the position it's in in the frames between the two wheels which are closely fitted together the pumps having to hang down here over this axle with the suspension and the moving of these wheels up and down there was no real space to hang a stretcher across and put the pump on I'd have to have done it up here anyway um, so I made this box frame to hold the uh, the pump had to put a reinforcing piece here forward bit so the pump didn't flex in the frame so let's take this pump apart these are just uh, the delivery is on the bottom and the feeds on the top so there's a certain amount of gravity that helps the water go round but what I have to do is there's a non-return valve here and there's a non-return valve at the top and then there's a, a gland where the ram goes in and out and this is the ram it's just a piece of stainless steel rod with a slot in the end and a pivot to go to an eccentric of the axle. So this fits in here and that nut is a gland and this is the ram that when it works backwards and forwards off the eccentric like that it works backwards and forwards off the eccentric like that it sucks water in here pushes it up goes into the ram chamber obviously, pushes it up and then it leaves by this top nut here and out through this tube. Have a look inside here. This is called a banjo joint. It's called a banjo joint for the very simple reason it's got a round ring like a banjo and this fits through the center of it and the copper pipe leading to it has a hole. This has a recess in it has a recess there for the water to flow around and it has a hole which that can pass which the water from the pipe coming through the banjo joint can pass through and it comes up and onto the seat of the valve which is there. So what we have is a simple 1 8 stainless steel ball that sits on the top there and acts as the valve. The water pushes it up when the pump is sucking and it sits down on here when the pump isn't sucking. Now what I have to do is make sure that seat there and the stainless steel ball are a very close fit. And the way I do that, after losing the stainless steel ball on the floor, so that stainless steel ball got lost on the floor to be found in a couple of years time. 
Anyway, I have a number of them, thank goodness. So what you do is to make this seat, I place it on the top of the, um, the banjo joint piece where the valve is going to sit and I give it a sharp tap with a hammer like so. Now that means that that ball seat has made a seat for itself inside the uh, edges of this, um, this uh, I don't know what you'd call it, some nut or other on the banjo joint. So that's made an edge around there for this to sit on. Now I can't use this ball again. The ball has got a flat on it. So that goes into the bin. Should have been the one I lost on the floor. If you look down here, this is the chamber where those pieces, that ball is going to float around in. Now you can't quite see it, I don't think. You can't quite see that there is another, there has to be another shoulder inside there to stop the ball going past when it's bouncing around with the water coming in and the pump pumping you don't want it to go past a certain point and get jammed up inside the ram here so there's a collar inside there, it's been machined in, it's a fairly simple thing to do but that collar can also form you know a valve seal rather like the valve seal you just see me make on here which is what I don't want so I have to slot that out a bit difficult but with a um, with a hand uh, grinder I can uh, make slots into it so what I do is I use this Dremel, it's got a diamond um, sort of grinder on the end of it, it's a metal with diamond implanted into it. It's very nice for grinding out in small spaces and I'm going to use that to grind out a little star shape in that shoulder that's inside here so that when the ball rushes up against the shoulder there's going to be sp these four little slots around it which allow the water to pass it. Bottom top. I've beaten the ball down on the top to make the um, uh, the seat for the ball to sit on accurately. I've carved into the, uh, the little shoulder inside there so that the water will pass and now it's time to assemble. This is the one that fits in the top. You can see how I've um, made um, indentations into it so the ball won't seat accidentally on that part it'll allow the water to pass, it won't make a seal on it because that's going to be, the ball's going to rush up against and bang up against here as the water goes through and it needs, the water needs to pass through that fitting. I've got rid of all the, um, the bits of filings, made sure these surfaces are dead flat. Now I'm going to add the, put, just drop the ball in there. Then I take a copper washer, I put the copper washer on the top there. I take the um, uh, the fitting, the banjo fitting. Got to make sure I get this the right way around. That goes on there like that. Got a couple washers in place. I put the uh, screw thread down through the banjo and just start tightening the thing up. Now I'll tighten that with a spanner when I'm a little closer. Do the same with the bottom, take the eighth inch um, stainless steel ball, place it inside there, it's inside there, you might or might not be able to see it. I take the uh, the piping, I've got the uh, Couple washer, couple washer, banjo joint, and the um, the stud in place. Looks a bit like a spaghetti junction, but uh, that was the inevitability of winding these uh, copper pipes around and getting them in the right position. Get this finger tight, and now I'm going to put the um, um, the rod, the ram rod, in there. The ram goes in like that. It's a pretty close fit. It's all been been reamed and fitted so there's no play in that. There's no o-ring either. There's no need to be an o-ring. It'll it'll pump water without an o-ring in there. O-ring's a bit sort of over lavish. Not required. I take some uh, just ordinary plumber's PTFE or Teflon tape and I roll it into a bit of a string 
Try and break it off. It's too strong for me. But you don't need very much. You only need a couple of, of strings of it round. So you can see the PTFE there. What I don't want to do is get it trapped in the thread. So I very carefully fit it up and into the nut. And then I just hand tighten the nut down. And that will form a nice lubricated seal for the pump. I use PTFE on all the glands, including piston glands, valve glands, valve stems on uh, control valves in the cab. I use it on my small models and I use it on my 5 inch gauge locomotive. I put it into the, the main piston glands on the um, 5 inch gauge locomotive that's done many many miles and haven't even needed to tighten it up. I don't like any of that uh, asbestos, graphited yarn. I think it's uh, sort of old and manky and it wears out very quickly. So there's the pump almost finished, I'll put it back in its frame. Here's the pump back into its frame. It's assembled, it's got the copper washers, it's got the non-return valves in and the plunger. It sits in a frame like that. I'll put the bolts on it. I'll put the, um, the eccentric strap back on, attach it back to the pump, and then the whole thing's ready to go.